After looking at gathering, let's look at one more kind of data tidying that we can do. We haven't looked at the situation with table 2 that we had. So in table 2, if you will recall, we had the country year, uh, but then instead of the cases and the population in two different columns, as we would have liked it to be in the tidy form, we have uh, the type as one column indicating cases and population, and the actual value is sitting in the column called count. Okay, so here essentially what's happening is that data that is supposed to belong to two columns, which is the cases and population, uh, is, a, uh, is sitting in one single column. So now we have to uh, break out the single column into multiple columns. Okay, and we do that with the operation of gather, and this is called spreading, which is spreading the data from one column into multiple columns. So looking at table 2, this is what we have, but this is what we want, right? So we want uh, the cases and population, that is this particular column, we want it split into two different column titles, that is the data in this column will actually go and become column titles, and these counts, this column will get spread across these two columns. So the cases would go here, and the population values would go here. So this is what we are looking for. Uh, that means effectively this is what is going on. The values, the unique values of the type column will become column names and these individual values will go into the appropriate columns. So this is what we are looking for in this. And we can achieve that using this command, the function spread. So since we are spreading the data from one column across multiple columns, we call it spread. And of course the table on which we are operating is table 2. And we're saying key is type, right? In other words, when we say key, effectively what we're saying is it's the column name that's going to be created. And we're saying pick out the column names by looking at the unique values in this particular column, column type, right? So uh, the unique values in this column type are cases and population. So those are going to become new columns in, our, uh, in the new table, in the output. And then we are saying in each of those columns, put these appropriate values. In other words, take the corresponding count from this column and put it into the appropriate value, right? So the count corresponding to cases, all the counts corresponding to cases will go into the cases column and all the counts corresponding to population will go into the population column. So that is how spread works. So if we review the gather and the spread commands or the spread functions, it looks like this. So when we did gathering, we had to indicate the columns to gather and what is the name to give to that gathered new column and what values to put into that column. Okay, so that was the, the way in which we call the gather function. Whereas when we call the spread function, all we have to specify is the, uh, is the, the source of the new column, columns and the values to put into it. So there's a little bit of an asymmetry here in the sense that you would have expected that the two would be symmetric in the sense that uh, the arguments would be similar, but they're not. Uh, and the reason, of course, is that in gather, we have to indicate the columns that need to be gathered and also indicate the new name for the column and the values. Whereas when we are doing spread, we don't have to explicitly indicate the columns that will result because the values are all sitting in the column from which we are creating that. Right? So the column that we specify as the key contains the names of the new columns, so you don't have to specify that explicitly. That is why there is a small asymmetry between gather and spread. Okay? Now what I would suggest is that uh, you really take a close look at gather and spread. Make sure you understand what is going on. And uh, one of the assignment problems that I'm going to give you uh, deals with gather and spread. So I would say devote a lot of time, look at it very carefully to get this uh, stuff. Right? Uh, this is really important and very useful because very often you find data that looks like this uh, because that's uh, easy for presentation, right? When data is presented, we tend to present the data in this form, right? But then we want to uh, display it or to, for processing that presentation format is not really useful. This will come out very clearly uh, in the assignment that you're going to do this week. And also, it has already come out pretty clearly from the example we have looked at. Apart from this asymmetry that you see in the structure of the function call itself, 
there is another extremely subtle asymmetry that is sitting between gather and spread. Let's take a look at it through this example. So let's say we create a table of stocks with uh, stocks for the two years 2015-2016 and we have the stock prices uh, or the returns at the end of two halves of the year. Right. So you've got the first half of 2015, first half, uh, second half of 2015 and the first and second halves of 2016 and the corresponding returns are mentioned here. Right, so this function call would create a table. And the table would lo look like this. Right, so you've got year, which is a double, that's a number. Half is also a number, and return is also numeric. Okay, so we've got this table that's created. Now we will spread the uh, data by year, which is to say that we'll make the years appear in columns, and uh, spread the data of the years across columns. And then we will gather the data once again to see if we can reconstruct this. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So stocks, and once we do the spread, we will now have the years in columns. So if you stop the command at the end of this, output you'll see is this. So you've got the years which have gone into columns, and we've got the returns appropriately distributed. And then we gather it back again. So we gather the data in the year column back again and uh, put it, uh, create a new column called return and put the data back. So uh, after this operation, we should get back effectively the data in this, the, the original table, except that the column orders might be a little bit different. So if you do this, you see the result like this. So instead of the year column being first, the half column has become first, the year column is still here and the return is here. So for practical purposes, this thing looks the same as what we started with. But there's a very subtle difference. If you look at the year column here, originally it was double, right? But then when we spread it out, the year values became column names, right? And because they became column names, they sort of took, became, became uh, character strings. So when we gather it back again, you see that uh, the values are now characters and not numbers. Okay, so that's one slight problem when you uh, when you do a gather and if you happen to have the column names as numeric originally then they'll come back as characters because anything that's a column name is a character when gather happens again uh, it tends to become a character so that is something we need to watch out for and be a little careful one more point why does this error happen right suppose we do table 4a gather 1999-2000 key equals year value equals cases okay so I would suggest you run this code and take a look at uh, the error message you get which is this position must be between 0 and n and then try to explain what the error message is all about okay so if you uh, stop the video and tried it out and you've got an explanation well the reason is that when we specify the columns for gathering we can either specify the columns by the column position or we can specify the columns by the column name if you specify the columns by the column name then of course column names have to be indicated uh, with the correct name and the column names for these two columns is not just the number but when you have unusual column names with numbers you need to have the back ticks right so if you go back and look at the command we used earlier then these two things were sub, uh, surrounded by backticks. Uh, here we don't have the backticks, so uh, the, the system is thinking that you're talking about column positions, and obviously we don't have a table with uh, 2,000 columns. So that's what's going on here. Okay, so if you have this particular table that you have here, spreading it fails. So I want you to think about why that is actually happening. Right, so what we're saying here is we've got uh, you know people's names we've got the key which is age and height and uh, so on and we've got the value so for example Philip Woods age is 45 height is 186 then again age is 50 and so on and so on okay so if you run this the code will fail so we want you to think about why that code is actually failing okay so once again uh, copy the, uh, the, the you, you already have the code 
So run the code, look at the error message and try to figure out what's going on, why the error is happening. Okay, so again, I would say, uh, stop the video, think about it, come back and continue the video. Okay, so I assume you've stopped the video and come back and you've got an explanation. Uh, the reason, of course, is that when you spread a triple like this, of course, you have to spread it uh, before the, you'll see the error message. To here, this code is just creating it. So when you spread it, what you are saying is that for Philip Woods, you're going to have one age, one height. And for other people, uh, for every person, you're going to have one age and one height. Well, it so happens that Philip Woods has two ages, right? So the key is actually conflicting, and that is the source of the error message, right? So this command, if you run this, uh, this is the problem. Can you add a column to fix this? Yes, right? If you make sure that... Uh, the, the value is unique for every combination, then it's fine. Here the value was not unique. So for example, for Philip Wood's age, you had two values. That was the problem. If you somehow make it unique, it will work. And of course, one, one thing we can do to make it unique is to add a year column. So we could change this triple to have a year column. So obviously, Philip Woods can have different ages in different years, right? So in 1990, he was 45. In 1995, he was 50, so that will work perfectly. Okay, so that's the explanation uh, for this scenario. Let's take a look at this table here. Uh, we create a, tri a, tri a table using the triple function. Just a simple illustration. So we've got three columns, pregnant, male, female. And we've got yes and no. And we've got the counts for, uh, for both of these categories, yes and no. Suppose we wanted to... Uh, you know, bring the columns male and female into one, right? Suppose we gather it and uh, we can easily do it this way. So we can say gather both those columns male and female and call the result as count. Okay, so we'll now have a, a, a column called count and we'll have all the combinations of male and female or, uh, or pregnant and gender and we'll have the counts. Okay, only problem is that uh, if you look at this particular data here, okay, that seems a little, nothing wrong with it, but it seems, seems a little ridiculous to, to even have that, that row in this uh, result. Right, so uh, what we could do is, to avoid that, we could use this flag na.rm equals true, which means remove the NAs. So when you do that, you get only three rows instead of the four rows and the row with uh, earlier the offending row is now gone. So that's just another thing to think about when you're doing gather. So when you're doing gather, uh, if there are NAs, the NAs would come into the output by default. If you want to get rid of them, you can use the na.rm equals true. So in the process of uh, looking at cleaning up of uh, tables into tidy data sets, Let's take a look at one more example. This was our earlier example of table three. We already looked at how to convert table two and table four A and four B, how to tidy them up. Table three, we've not looked at how to tidy it up. So in table three, uh, admittedly a very concocted sort of example where uh, two columns are really jammed into one in this way. Uh, now this example may appear concocted, but there are other cases where you will clearly see this happening. Uh, that things are, uh, you know, jammed together. Multiple columns are jammed together into a single column. So here two attributes are jammed into one column and we need to pry them apart. So that's what we are going to look at now, right? So we look at this. So what we clearly see is that these two are jammed together and we can use the separate function to do that. So we say table three pipe separate, separate rate into cases and population. Now notice that when I said separate, I didn't have to tell it that this slash character is the one on which to perform the separation, right? So by default, when it does the separation, uh, when it finds certain kinds of uh, typical uh, delimiter characters, it uses them as separators. But of course, as you can imagine, we can also specify how to separate, meaning which character to use the separation. So when you do this, this is what you get, uh, and of course, uh, when you're doing a separate, uh, the system cannot figure out 
uh, whether the resulting column is numeric or not numeric. I'm, I cannot say, cannot figure out, but it doesn't make any assumption about the fact that the resulting column should be numbers or whatever. It's up to us to make the change if we want. So right now what you have is two columns and both of those columns are actually uh, characters, character columns, they're not numeric. Of course, the, the source was also the character column. It has simply retained the, the type of the source column. That's all it did. So if you look at the transformation that has taken place, obviously what has happened is that uh, the two parts of this rate column have been split up and put into two separate columns as we can imagine. 